reality of the five love languages and there's no connection with any kind of marital success whatsoever it's just it's just a bullshit book that somebody wrote because they wanted to give women something to talk to their husbands about a lot of guys fell for it too i mean i, I fell for it too like when it first came out it's like oh you know let's take the survey and the survey says and your love language is uh, acts of whatever and you know mine is this you know let's make sure that we fill each other's cup sort of thing where i've seen it go really really wrong is when you um you know you see these facebook pages and it's like the men of masculinity or the savage league of masculine men or some shit like that and the guy will come on he's been like i've been married for 18 years and we've got you know three kids and blah 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 and you know my wife is uh belligerent disparaging and condescending to me and uh you know i'm a good guy and i you know the mortgage is paid and i take care of dinner and i put away the dishes sort of stuff and you know I'm not really sure why she's not banging me, right? And then invariably you get guys that chime and are like, well, you know, you should find out what her love language is and make sure that you serve her properly. It's like, that is not gonna, that's got nothing to do with it, bro. It's it's just some bullshit masturbation that, you know, they give to uh, couples to sort of, uh, you know, marinate on and hopefully think that it works and fixes things. Your other question was to do with game and long-term relationships. What yeah. was the question specifically? Yeah, like, like so to have game and a long-term relationship, like I'm not sure exactly what that means so like on a day-by-day -day basis you know what would that look like to have well how would you define game first of all why don't we start with that well i i'm, I'm not i don't really exactly know what what you're talking about to be honest with you so oh, okay. i guess my, my impression is is what you are thinking game is is maybe um just being fun and entertaining and lively mm -hmm. and that kind of thing now on a day daily day-by-day -day basis um of course that's a little bit uh you know doing it in, in short streaks of time like a three four hour five hour date is, is pretty doable but to do all day long eh, a little, little challenging so i'm just well, wondering if that's what you meant by game well i mean game is i think broadly defined as using your skills your charisma and yourself to persuade women to essentially be fond of you, if I can use those words, right? Um, you know, when the pickup community uses the word game, they sort of use it along the lines of, you run like a set of lyrics on her, which will persuade her to be interested in you, it is the way they essentially use game. So if we use that definition, it's just using that in a long-term relationship, which I've said this before, is more work and harder for a lower payoff and higher risk than just dating women on yeah. a non-committed basis. Because at least when you're dating women on a non-committed non basis, you've got a lot more options, you got variety. Whereas on a long-term basis, you lose the options, you lose a variety, and you're gaming somebody you've been with for years, right? Um, you, have to, you have to game a girl over a long-term basis to have a strong relationship. You got to be playful. You got to flick boogers at her sort of thing. Not in the, you know, sense of actually doing it, but I mean like poke at her a little bit, be playful. Like she's your little kid sister, like you tap her on the head sort of thing. That's cute on the nose, boop sort of thing. You know, like those are all elements of game, you know, including being a strong, competent, masculine, useful guy that can solve problems, that has a good social network, blah, 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 blah. Like, all the stuff that you know we know women like and including their long list of 737 things that they don't like which includes apparently not wearing sweatpants with a hole in it at the airport <laughs> yeah. so well, I long, gotta, I gotta story tell short, you long story short is who fucking cares what 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 women really want because at the end of the day all they want to do is be with the best that they can get so just be the best that they can get yeah yeah gotcha so I, I gotta tell you i've worked with uh oh probably 13 guys that would act, actually did follow through and uh, they all lost 40 plus pounds and their relation just that that alone and the relationships were transformed yeah so I really mean, something happens in the big psyche. change yeah something happens in the psyche of uh of, you look uh, better because you look yeah. better your clothes fit better you know women are more responsive to you if you you know if you're built like a beach ball and you go out and people are disgusted by your appearance your wife is going to notice that and she's not going to want you. She like she wants a guy that other women look at. She wants a guy that other men want to be. Right. So not being fat is a component of game, if you can say that. Moff, you're about to say something. 
Yeah, I'd like to chime in on both these points really quickly. So <clears throat> the problem, I mean, the problem with the love language is we've kind of already talked about it briefly, but Gary Chapman is not a clinical psychologist. He doesn't have a, a clinical psychology background. He was a marriage counselor um, that he did a lot of work through his ministry, through his church. And we've had multiple discussions, Rich and I, on this show about how um, being a believer and thinking that marriage is the institution before God is somehow insulating you from female's nature, which it doesn't and it's not. Mm-hmm. Um, and this idea that if you, you know, and, and look, just just based on what we know, if we can t- step outside and look at a basic evolutionary psych sort of um when we know what women value in relationships and what men value in relationships, if you ask a hundred men, I I would venture to say that at least 80% or higher, they would say their quote unquote love language is physical touch. If you ask that a hundred women, I would say at least 80 of those is going to be some sort of combination of gifts or acts of service. And so when you take those two things, it means as a guy, if I, if I give my woman enough flowers and I do the dishes enough and I'm a good guy and I clean the gutters, I will get sex. It turns relationships into these mathematical equations, which they're just they're just not quite that simplistic. Um, and it took something that makes a lot of sense, something that was really dumbed down for the layman. And people are like, oh, this sounds good. It makes me feel good. I don't care about it being true. Therefore, we're going to run with it. And now every psychologist out there, somebody that subscribes to the APA or dating app is going to say, well, what's your love language? And have you asked your wife about hers, et cetera, et cetera. So it has no basis in any scientific backing or any sort of clinical study. So that's that's the main problem I have with it. Um, I think what we talk about game, I think the term that we'd like to use is you, always, you, you must always game your wife. And so again, what that means is continuing to demonstrate the traits and behaviors of the alpha seed side of the hypergamous coin, right? If we know about hypergamy, it's alpha seed, beta need. You need to be the guy that she wants to take care of her when she's pregnant and she can't defend herself, but she also wants the guy who is hot and it's a badass and who will be able to fight off attackers and predators and things like that. What the vast majority of guys do is they find themselves once they're married or with kids or whatever, they completely forget about those alpha traits and the things that it took to get her attracted and they completely fall into their beta tendencies. And so we are just telling guys that you need to remember to remain attractive to your wife. And that's, there's a lot of different strategies that boil into it. Getting in shape is one. There are some advanced level strategies like dread game, things like that. But this idea that once you're in a relationship that it's ironclad and you need to stop being attractive or you can slack off is is a real issue. So that's what we talk about when we're talking about needing to game your wife. It's just about maintaining the attractive qualities and sort of the alpha C qualities on a long-term basis, which most guys fail at doing in marriages and long-term relationships. It's just it's just her responding positively to you. That's all that it really boils down to. Does she look up to you? Does she, does she respond positively to you or does she disparage you? Does she express contempt? I've said that, you know, contempt is the clock that counts down to the end of the marriage. It's it's going to lead to mm-hmm. divorce at some point if she expresses yeah. a lot of contempt for you. Um, but I mean, like gaming your girlfriend or your wife is really just making sure that she's in your frame. She looks at you as, um, you know, her best option. Um, she's respectful. She wants to be useful. She's enthusiastic about being intimate with you, you know, stuff like that. All of those things that that lead to those end results can be called game is all that that means. Got it. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Does that all make right, sense? Keep up your work. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I got it. Yeah. Well, keep up your cool. work, guys. I really, uh, I learned from you a lot and, and uh, um, you know, I'm, I'm out here, probably see by my screen name there, I'm out here trying to help marriages and and uh, guys with, primarily uh, with, with, with ladies and I actually use a lot of your information. So I thank you for that. Thanks, man. Yeah. Pass it out. Share it with people. Thanks. Sure. Thanks, Kevin. All right, guys. I really hope that you enjoyed that clip. If you want to check out the full length podcast episode, you can find that right over here. Also, make sure you visit my website over here where you'll find my supplements, the opportunity to book me privately one-on-one for coaching, and most importantly, my new school of unplugging, which you'll find on the courses tab. Newer to the channel, hit subscribe.